Hey guys, thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris and you officially entered a Chucky zone. Since I've been the guy to give you all the news concerning the upcoming Child's Play remake that'll be hitting theaters June 21st, 2019, have a playlist for you on my channel if you want to get up to date with that. I thought it's only fair that we take a look at all the movies that have come before it. This was a great time for me to do it because OG Chucky's no longer in theaters and he's kind of looking for work while he's waiting for his TV show on Sci-Fi Channel to be made. So I was able to book him to be here. Um, Chucky, I'm kind of thirsty. Yes. He's not a diva. He's actually a really nice guy if you get to know him. Thank you, Chucky. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll tell you when you're needed, okay? okay. <laughs> Guys, you star in one movie and you think you can run the show, right? But don't think of this video as much of a review. Think of it more as a celebration of these Chucky movies starting off with the first one. So go ahead and let me also know your thoughts about this movie down below. Share me your story, how old you were when you first saw it, what it means to you, your favorite scenes, your least favorite things about this movie, anything and everything. You know I'm going to be down there replying to each and every one of you. But without further ado, let's go ahead and review Child's Play from 1988. Thank you, Chucky. So let's get the setting started. It's 1988 and a young film student by the name of Don Mancini writes a screenplay. And I am a Don Mancini fan for what we'll get to in other reviews, but I understand some people don't really like him and his involvement with the future films. But I still respect the man and I'm happy he brought Chucky to life and he's the one that's continued the train rolling. Bringing it back to 1988 when he was writing this film, it's not at all what we thought it was gonna be. His original script was entitled Batteries Not Included and it was gonna tell the story Story of Andy and this doll, originally calling him Buddy. Now this would be a doll sort of like those dolls that would pee themselves, except this one would bleed. It would be a doll that you could buy and was fragile, it could get cuts, it could get bruises, it could bleed, and you would have to go out and buy band-aids for your doll, and a bunch of other stuff. And while, while I think that was a great and fun idea, I still prefer what it ended up being thanks to director Tom Holland of this movie. When he got involved, he started to butt heads with young Don Mancini and wanted to change things up quite a bit. One of the first things was the title of this movie can no longer be called Batteries Not Included because, well, Steven Spielberg was working on a movie of that same name. So then the name was changed to Blood Buddy to go in fact with the name of the doll, Buddy, and the fact that it bleeds. But when Tom Holland got in the picture, he wanted to change the whole backstory and wanted to add a voodoo element to it to explain why the doll came to life. He also wanted to add in the serial killer Charles Lee Ray, whose name was derived from three different serial killers of our time, Charles Manson of the Manson Murders, Lee Harvey Oswald, who of course snipered down John F. Kennedy, and James Earl Ray, who assassinated Martin Luther King. Side note, that's got to be an amazing way to title a serial killer. And hey, that just rolls off the tongue, Charles Lee Ray. Originally, Don Mancini had it that this doll would come to life through Andy's manifestation of anger, of the people that were hurting him in his life, his babysitter, his bullies, and the angry teacher. All that rage that Andy the character would build up when he goes to sleep would then manifest into the doll and it would go out and kill those people who did him wrong. And honestly, this Frankenstein of a character was created by two people, by studio interference and by the creator himself, Don Mancini. And that's always an example to me of when a studio interferes and it turns out good. A lot of times we have a studio interfere and it turns out horrible for the movie, but this time it made a perfect cocktail of a horror icon. But now jumping into the things I love about this movie, let's just dive right into them and I'm going to go on a little bit of a ramble here. The movie opening up with Charles Lee Ray being hunted down by Mike Norris, leading them into a toy store. I just love that setup. I love how they go straight into it. A lot of horror movies nowadays want to build up that anticipation, want to build up your suspense, and a lot of times the payoff isn't even worth all that anticipation and suspense. If anything, you just created a much longer movie. And with Brad Dorham, I loved him as a character the very first time he yelled on screen in that toy store. I mean, he was the type of guy I wouldn't want to get his order wrong at a Starbucks. But after that setup is put out of the way, we are brought to the heart of this film, Andy Barkley, played by Alex Vincent. This was a kid who, on his birthday, decided to make breakfast for his mother. You know that's a really great child right there. It's your birthday, kid. You're not supposed to be doing anything. But that's one thing about this horror movie I also love, is the relatability of it. Because we can all remember being a kid that young and excited for our birthday, seeing the presents wrapped up and going, what's in there? Is it the thing I want? Is it the thing I desperately need? I'm also loving how, again, at the very beginning of this movie, they're setting up the branding of this good guy of how imprinted it is into their lives. You have the kid wearing the pajamas, you have a cereal box, you have a cartoon show, which back in the day, if something had a cartoon show, you can bet damn well they had action figures. He-Man, Transformers, G.I. Joe. Now getting to Karen Barkley, who's played by Katherine Hicks, man, she to me is the main character of this movie. Some of you can argue that it's Andy or hell that it's even Chucky himself, but to me, the main character of the first Child's Play 
is Karen Barkley. She's the scream queen of this movie. All your typical horror films have a female lead that's going through this pursuit. And even though she's not being directly hunted down by Chucky, she is what drives this movie for me. And she is the one that I wish carried on alongside with Andy in future installments. Her performance is great. She really gives off this loving, caring mom. And one of the things I absolutely loved is she was the type of character that when your child says that my doll is alive or hell with other horror movies, when they say the ghost talks to me, there's a friend in my room that you can't see, but he's there. I always hate that type of trope because it's always 30 minutes or an hour of adults not believing the child and then us being frustrated as an audience of like, just believe the kid. Trust me, it's there. Which leads to the best part of this movie, my favorite scene, the type of scene that I watch when I'm sad, when I'm lonely, hell, when I'm horny. When she believes her son 100%, puts his theory to the test, threatens the doll to throw it in the fireplace, and mwah, magic happens on screen. I said talk to me, damn it, or else I'm gonna throw you in the fire! You stupid bitch, you filthy slut! Did you Mike Norris also does a great job in the movie. I like the detective. He was wisecracking. He had a personality to him. He didn't believe the mom, but he still investigated it. And then when he had that car scene with Chucky, a lot of fun. And it was the first little bits that we saw of wisecracking Chucky. And I can just remember watching that as a kid and being terrified that you're in this driving position and you can't run away from this doll. You're stuck. I mean, and that's what I loved also about this movie. It was very creative with the way it did its deaths, its attacks. Because anybody who knows Chucky always says the same things. Oh, you could just kick him. You could just run away. He's nothing he's this small but this movie does great job of setting up scenarios where you can't really get away from Chucky and on that note if you've watched one of my previous videos where we talk about the reactions to the test screening for the new Child's Play remake I'll link it down below or car right above me we had some backlash of people saying that they were upset that Chucky only had one knife kill supposedly in the movie and when watching the original movie back Chucky technically only has one knife kill as well and it wasn't even directly used on the victim it was used on a doll that he used to kill the voodoo teacher everything else from there there were different ways to kill somebody and that just plays in part to the character of Charles Lee Ray because we learn in future movies this guy is addicted to murder he's addicted to killing people hell in the movie before he becomes Chucky the killer doll he was the Lakeshore Strangler so I should tell you right there a knife isn't even his preferred way of killing it's strangling people and in fact we do get one strangle in this movie Last things I'll say also that I love about this movie is the theme. I love that Child's Play theme. It's that thing that could be playing in the background. I'm like, hey, that's that's the Chucky movie right there. The fact that the movie's only about 80 minutes long, which is short and sweet, exactly what it needs to be, not dragging out this whole movie for something as simple as a killer dog going after a child. Also, that entire final act, the battle that our main characters have to go through to kill this Chucky, the burning phase, that him slow walking to Andy. You can obviously tell that's a person and not really an animatronic, but man, does that look awesome. You can't just kick this guy down, man. You have to go through so many different levels, and it made sense at the time because he was turning human so he had a tolerance for pain meaning it probably hurt but it probably didn't feel as bad as we thought it might have because he wasn't all the way human in that body yet getting on to that though the pain he feels in this movie god i love me every time we get a chucky scream <laughs> But if I had to get on the negative side of things I didn't quite enjoy, for what, I can't really think of many. I can understand that this isn't a perfect movie and I wouldn't give it a perfect score. But it's just so simple, cut, and dry that it's like, why nitpick at it? It did its job at being an entertaining, scary movie for its time that still holds up today if you watch it. The things I look at now, being older with more perspective on different movies, is one, Andy wasn't the best actor as a kid, but you can't blame him, he was a child. Just some of the lines he said were very robotic, and him even being a child, you could tell he high-pitched his voice, just sound a a little more innocent and cute. His real name is Charles Lee Ray, and he's been sent down from heaven by daddy to play with me. I do wish there were a little more concrete and forward with the rules about the voodoo. Always important in a movie, if you set rules on your horror villain, you have to stick to them. To me, I was watching the movie back now of why don't you just go to another good guy and reset the clock on your new body. Just keep switching and switching and switching until you're finally close enough to get to Andy. Because now looking back and realizing why the voodoo was thrown in there and how it plays out throughout the other movies, you could tell it was just something to always be an escape, to always be a quick fix of why something was happening. Sequels could have been a a lot better than they turned out to be. All right, now for the rating for Child's Play of 1988, I'm gonna give action one star. That's all mainly due to that scene with Mike Norris and Chucky in the car. Very action-packed right there. And the explosion of Eddie Caputo. Come on. 
Commenting the film, I'm going to give it one star also. This wasn't really the wisecracking personality filled Chucky that we know to love. He had one or two lines in there where he was funny, but I think that was just enough to keep with this horror tone. Drama in the film, I'm going to give two and a half stars. It's a simple story. It's played out in the perfect timing and the heart of it really is Andy, but the main driving force to me was Karen Barkley. Horror in the film, I'm going to give two and a half stars because you have to remember for the time, this was the kind of movie that was being boycotted to not go watch because it had a young person in a violent situation. And and I agree, watching it back, there are some great horrifying moments. Suspense the film, I'm gonna give it two stars, and that was all mainly to the POV shots and the buildup of Chucky coming to life in that fireplace scene. Casual fans, I'm gonna give it a B plus. Cinephiles, I'm going to give it an A minus. And critically, I'm going to give it a C plus. For Child's Play 1988, I recommend you add this to your collection at home. That's a keeper. But again, those are just my thoughts on the original Child's Play. Let me know what you thought about this movie. Like I said, share it down below. You know I'll be down there talking to you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at 3 Film Review. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.